Hello guys, Eddie Gill here with another how-to video. Today we want to talk about mating the S21 tail cone to the fuselage cage. The reason I've decided to make this video is because in the past few months I've read a couple of posts on our builders groups where people were having a hard time with this step. Having to call two or three buddies, having to call an AMP, um, and I want to show the method that we use here at Rance to do this. In all reality, it really shouldn't take more than 15 or 20 minutes to do. Um, so I'd like to make sure that we get this in correct alignment, everything perfectly straight. And if we follow two or three steps, it's very easy to do. So without further ado, let's get to it. Before we start, I would like to share a tip that is useful in preparation for mating the tail cone. Because the tail cone is on a flat surface, you can't have a Clico in the bottom or even through the top on this bottom longer on here. We can see that it can easily move, but it's very important, I'm not sure if on the camera you can see the alignment of those holes, it's very important that this stay in one piece while it's mated to the to the cage. So what I like to do is in this very first hole here, I'm going to pop what I call a sacrificial rivet. I'm going to use an AAPQ41. I'm going to pop out the center mandrel with a click punch and then with a the Dremel I'm going to grind away the protruding part, the part that would stick up on this side so that it doesn't interfere with the rest of the mating. And in a future step, that rivet will be drilled through uh, together with the doubler that is going to go on this longeron right here. So let me get to that part. So here I have put that AAPQ41 rivet in that first hole, and I have popped out the center, the center part of the rivet. There's nothing in it. I'm going to grind it away with a Dremel cutoff wheel. And then I'll finish it with a flat file. Um, it's pretty easy to do this step. It's a very soft rivet and it doesn't take more than a second. I'll come back and show what it looks like when it's when it's finished. Okay, I have finished grinding and filing that rivet. Um, so now it's nice and smooth on this surface. Um, the holes in the belly skin and the holes in the longeron have to align perfectly. And while we're fitting the tabs from the cage, we don't want it to be pushed out or pulled in and have these holes out of alignment. That's the main reason why we're doing this. Um, so we know that we assemble this on a 4 by 12 foot table, flat table. Um, so I've got my tail cone laying flat on the table. And although not a critical dimension, I'm sure somebody's going to want to know, I have the tail of my uh, tail cone overhanging 57 inches off my off my bench. Um, so another important thing, I like to center my tail cone side to side. Um, and here where you see those two clicos, if you are willing to put a hole in your in your table, a couple of holes, it, it really helps to drill a number 30 size hole through these uh, two holes that I have uh, shown here. And that locks in the tail cone pretty solidly so there is no lateral movement as you're, as you're mating the, the cage to it and pushing in and out. So um, the next step is I'm going to grab that cage and I'm going to present it to the tail cone here. Okay, here we have the, the cage presented to the tail cone. Um, something that you might want to do, I found that a shim on the back side of the cage at this position right here. 50 thousandths is what I use, but it could be a thick washer, which is 60 thousandths. Um, just anything so that when they're mated, this angle will not hit directly on this tube. So 50 thousandths has seemed to be the good number for me. Um, you're going to want a two by four at the front edge supporting the cage. Um, because I've built a few I have it marked on my table so I know the approximate location, but it's going to end up ultimately a few inches forward of the, the lift strut attachment. Okay, 
So the next thing we're going to do, I'll see if I can do this single-handedly, is push the cage into the tail cone. And I have a good solid connection right there, okay? All right, so what we have, we have that longer on contacting that shim on the other side, I can see from here that it is as well. So we're going to play with the location of that two by four, fore and aft until it gives us the angle that is called out for in the manual, which is that 88.9 degrees, give or take two tenths of a degree. So let me set up the protractor and I'll come back and show that. All right. The sweet spot for checking that angle is right where this top engine mount bolt hole location is. So I'm going to take my protractor, I'm going to turn it on, position it right there in that spot. You want to be careful not to move the protractor much in this direction. Keep it as straight as possible because it'll it the reading will change if you rotate it on that tube. So holding it straight, I'm going to zero it out right there at 0, 0.0. And then we put it right on top of the longer on here on the same side. And it's going to give us a reading of 89.1 degrees. So we're 0.2 of optimum. So here is where we play with the location of that two by four. I'm going to loosen those clamps and either move it forward a quarter of an inch or move it back and uh, and that'll alter that angle. So I'm going to modify it and I'll be right back with the results. Okay, as it turned out I had to move the two by four. Well, you can see the line that I had drawn there. So I moved it a total of maybe half an inch back. Um, you can't really tell much here, but it changes the angle. So we're going to retake this reading again. There we are on that same spot. We're going to zero it out. There it's reading 0.0. .0. I hope you can see that. I'll position it on the Longeron right here. And settle down there. 88.8. We're shooting for 88.9. So there is 88.9 degrees. I'm happy with that. Okay, so at this point we have established the angle between the firewall and the tail cone. We are not going to move that 2x4 at all. It's clamped in place. Our our cage is pushed up against the stops. The only other dimension that we have to take now is the measurement between both sides of the uh, engine mount top bolt locations to a common point on the tail cone. So let me prep for that step and I will be right back. One thing I forgot to mention in the previous step is we always measure the starboard side or the right side um, at the firewall location and the longer on and honestly do not worry about measuring the pilot side or the, the port side. Um, you're going to end up chasing your tail all day long and the difference uh, between the two sides is minimal. Um, we've had at least 24, 25 excellent flying airplanes with this method. Um, and it is exactly the dimension that you want. Okay, so in preparation for our next step, we're going to need a straight edge across the firewall works the best. Um, I have a piece of angle that I use here. If anything, it's extremely critical that once it's bolted in place or clamped, that these dimensions are the same on both sides. They have to be identical. So we're going to take a long tape measure 
and we're going to measure to a common point on the tail cone aft section and we like to use this nut plate right here it's it's in the center it's a machine uh, machined uh, hole so we know it's uh, it's accurate so we're going to take a couple of dimensions from side to side with the help of somebody um, and uh, and we'll make sure that it's perfectly straight all right so as you noticed we needed a very small amount of adjustment to get the dimensions to be equal from side to side so I ended up pulling the right side of the cage out just a little bit so if we come up and look at it's gonna be hard to see on the camera but there's just a tiny amount of space here hardly noticeable but that is what gave us the equal number so at this point we're gonna take some clamps and we're gonna clamp the four tabs to the longerons in preparation for drilling okay I've got my clamps located here on all four corners on all four gussets and here in macro mode you can see that gap a little bit better that's about all it took to get it even so by moving the cage we did not alter the angle that 2x4 stayed in place and I've rectified that it's still 88.9 degrees so the next thing is to drill from the inside all the holes in the in the gussets through the the longeron and the side skins combination of a regular uh, drill and an extension number 30 does the trick so let me drill those holes and I'll be right back with you guys Okay, so we have drilled every hole in the gussets and both sides are now solidly locked in and that concludes the mating of the tail cone and the cage. It's a pretty simple process. Thank you guys.